<laughs> um, I was like, who's Snoop? I know who Snoop Dogg is. I know who Snoop or Snoop Lion. What's it going to be, Snoop Dogg? Are you a lion or are you a dog? You're going back and forth. You're confusing me. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in the Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video about where you coming from from your heart you know what i'm saying like what what is the message what you got to say together forever like a love song together forever we are in this i have to do this uh uh review attempted spoiler review chat of um our vital ways a ton now, Chad, how many of you have seen the documentary film Our Vinyl Weighs a Ton based on the true life experiences, Chad? And I'm, I don't, I'm not being, you know, like facetious about them, not being sarcastic, but based on the true life experiences of various artists, Chad, whether it comes to any, anything, any genre, whether it comes to rock or, or hip hop or, or rap or blues or funk or disco or anything else in between, Chad. The real life experiences of those who dealt with uh, Stone Throws Records. Let's see what we have here. Uh, Dark Slayer, but not actual shit. Not actual shit. No, no indeed. Sure, sure, never seen it. Dark Slayer, haven't seen this. Steve, I have not. Cabs, never heard of it. <laughs> I have not. I'm not going to front. No, that's good. The Gogs, never seen it. So most of you have not seen this show. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a little... Uh, Give a little idea about my knowledge of this of this company. This is the first time I ever heard of the chat. When I first watched the documentary, I was like, I'm not aware of this. I did a little research beforehand about Stone's Throws record chat, but kind of give you a basic overview of what this film is about, chat. It really is straight up. It, it initially uh, covers the origins of the Stone Throws label of the record company chat, created by Chris Manock. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I hope it's how I pronounce his name, Chad. That's how I'm going to pronounce it now. That is set in stone, like Stone Throws record. is Chris Manock, mostly known to the populace. Chad, I mean, tell me if you heard of this uh, person, Chad. Peanut Butter Wolf. Have you heard of Peanut Butter Wolf before? Have you ever heard of Peanut Butter Wolf? Okay. He was a hip-hop artist delving into all sorts of other uh, subgenre of music, including rap and blues and funk and disco, along with his. Some people are saying yes, that's good. Okay, okay, I'm got you now. Okay, I'm leading you towards some other things that will maybe recognize together, Chad. This is good. He also, he, well, he didn't form this company, Chad, but he got his 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 start in music with his uh, uh, his longtime partner, Chad, and throughout the '80s and '90s, he grew up with this uh, with this guy, Chad. They grew up together and they bonded over their love of music with their, some of their other friends who went on to successful careers in the music industry. But one Charles Edward Hicks Jr. chat, who is known professionally as uh, Charisma. And they originally, she has the movie kind of falls in the first, I'd say, 15 minutes. They're trying to, I mean, really be hired by a record company. They're doing all these various uh, songs, sampling from other people's songs and creating these, uh, you know, the, these pieces of music, chat, referencing other artists and combining their own. I mean, it's typ typical that you see in hip hop and rap, right? And uh, apparently they had gotten a deal with a record company chat but it wasn't like one of the, again th this is this is a familiar story we've heard of a lot of you know budding artists chat, especially during this time actually it means the same story we hear all, all so, so often where you get these young artists who are just so unfamiliar with the intricacies of the industry chat kind of the nitty-gritty details the corporate side if you will and they're like this is the best that we could fucking get and of course when it comes down to the the fine print chat the record company gets most of the goddamn money and of course they own the rights to all their music it's it's a pretty shit deal you know a typical of most record companies but it established chat it established the seeds if you will into what will uh, eventually be Stone Throne Records. And so you had uh, Chris Minock and you had uh, Charles Edward Hicks, and they, they got this deal. The movie kind of established, like, oh, they're going to celebrate their family chat, their, their high school friends and everything. It's a, it's a great time. It's like despite, you know, the, the difficulties of finally finding a, a record label and, um, uh, you know, dealing with the fact that they're not going to make much money uh, from it, if at all, it's like, okay, we're going to get our name out there. But sadly, tragedy uh, 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 struck chat in uh, the, the early 90s. I believe it was like, 19, I'm going to say 1990. Let me, get, let me get, put some respect on this man's name. 
1993, I was going to say 92, it was 1993, December 16th, uh, uh, Charles Edward Hicks, Charisma Chat, he was gunned down in his car, he was, um, he was an attempted carjacking, he lived in a, apparently a, uh, the Myrtle capital of the United States at the time, Chat, which was uh, East Palo Alto, California, kind of going into uh, details and how, sadly, it was, it was a very poor neighborhood, um, did not get a lot of state funding uh, over police and everything. And uh, while he was just driving home one night, someone attempted to uh, carjack him at gunpoint. They shot him multiple times, and he died, Chad. So, I mean, his, his career, it didn't even have time to, I mean, his music was already starting to get known throughout the state of California, Chad, but it was, it was cut so incredibly short. And sadly, the because of his uh, untimely death, and a sad death. The the lap, the label that they're with canceled the the thing. They're like, well, you don't have half of the what you what, you know of your of your group. So we're we're gonna f completely just cancel the goddamn deal. And so this this left uh, Manak and I mean, incredibly distraught. Not only is he mourning his friendship, he's also kind of mourning the his his career that didn't even begin that died chat before it really got out there. And so it's, you know, it's, it's like, okay, this is an interesting concept. I'm like, okay, you know, so far I'm like, you know what? I don't know a lot about this, guys, but the, the, the documentary is doing a good job of establishing what this organization is, the origins of it, and uh, Chris Manock himself, Peter Butter Wolf. I was like, okay, this is good. And then it kind of starts, he's like, okay, well, I, I, I can't do, I can't, I, like he talks about how he took what was left of both of their uh, uh, works chat uh, was able to also sample stuff that Charisma did and incorporate it into new songs in a way to honor him and uh, basically, you know, demoed this stuff for other uh, record labels. And it was his, uh, what he wanted to do was also be able to pay uh, Charisma's family for basically using his, his, his likeness and what was left of his, his work that was, was unfinished. And so if he was going to get a record deal, half the money would go to his family. So already it's like, wow, this, this is actually, this is a really nice thing that the guy's doing. Uh, but no company wanted anything to do with it. They would either just outright say no, reject him, or uh, what often happened, just didn't say anything. And so this guy just went, all right, fuck it. I'm going to start my own company. And this this was grassroots as hell, Chad. I mean, starting like in a goddamn garage and just connecting with other artists who were struggling throughout the state of California and the surrounding uh, states, everything from the Nevada to Arizona, Oregon, Washington, chat. And uh, it's like, okay, this, this is like, a, it's an interesting story and how it, the, the company eventually grew and this music proliferated and, you know, stone throws, right? Because it's a stone throws away. It's that kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, you're nowhere, you're never going to get close. But that's why he, he named his uh, record label company that, which I always thought was kind of cool. And eventually he created this incredibly successful record company that eventually started to produce uh, music from, I mean, anyone, Chad, everyone from Kanye West uh, to Common to MF Doom to Snoop Dogg. I mean, th this is what this guy did. And all in honor of, uh, of, uh, of his friend, Charisma, and like half this goddamn money that he earned went to his family. So it's already a great story. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Now, the problem I have this documentary chat is that after that, the first 20 minutes, which is kind of the origin of this company, honestly, this should have been a short documentary chat. That's all it needed to be. It needed to be a good 20, 30 minutes, solid. But what happens after that, as you learn about this, this company, it just starts going into all these interviews of all these artists and just their general experience with the company company that's all it is and the thing is again i'm not too familiar with music and so there's no lower thirds in this movie chat which by the way if you don't know what a lower third is that, that that's like it typically is in the left hand corner and it displays the the name of the person who's talking and what, I mean, what company they represent or what group they're from there's none of that in this film and it's because it's very much kind of like an underground guerrilla style filmmaking where it's a lot of shaky cam uses a shit ton of archive footage and, uh, I mean, it's like, okay, I mean, it's, I, mean I, get, I get the aesthetic you're going for. This is all guys that started their careers in the 80s and throughout the 90s, and that's why the footage looks the way it does, so it's an aesthetic thing. But as someone who is unfamiliar with the music genre, aside from a few things, Chat, that I personally like, um, it was difficult for me to kind of get into it after this part, after the initial 20, 25 minutes. And, yeah, we talked to people like uh, MF Doom and how he got his career. That's all it is, Chad. It's just they're, they're, they're kind of a short five-minute 
a description of what their career was, their one experience with uh, uh, Stone Throw Records, and that's about it. And then it just goes to the next person. And this happens, this movie's like an hour and a half long, it's about 92 minutes. And the, uh, so the, the rest of this film chat, the 70 minutes of this movie that's really left, it's just all these various interviews. And I, I have to admit, like ev everyone's uh, experience is, is very similar to each other because they all went through the same exact thing. They couldn't get a record deal at all of any of these companies. They went to Stone Throw and they showcased their music and they got that deal and they got to uh, 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 retain uh, the ownership of their music at the same time. That's it's just that over and over and over and over again. And I can tell you this: like this is probably uh, a, a great like little uh, a documentary. People who who love music, who love uh, kind of the you know, the, un I mean, the underground hip hop and rap and blues and funk and disco and, and any other artist that combines all these things together. I think it's great for those people. If you love those artists. Then you should definitely watch this. It's currently free on YouTube right now, chat. Just uh, just type in um, our vinyl weighs a ton. You'll instantly find it. Uh, there won't be any issue. But yeah, overall, it's that that's really it. I there were a couple of moments I thought, okay, this is fucking weird. I mean, they hire some people you've you have still not heard of to this day. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds boring. I'm trying. I'm trying here. Um, it was like, who's Snoop? I know who Snoop Dogg is. I know who Snoop or Snoop Lion. What's it going to be, Snoop Dogg? Are you a lion or are you a dog? You, you're going back and forth. You're confusing me. You're confusing me here. Um, but I, there are there were a few moments I thought were funny. Uh, one was they were interviewing this artist called Diva Chat, and her whole thing is that, and she's like, she's like a method, method singing and acting as this character chat, who is this reincarnation of this alien from another world beyond the Milky Way galaxy, and she has come to share her funky groove of all of us lame, square, earthling chat with us. And the thing that's so great about the interview is, is that she's just making all this shit up on the fly because she's constantly just going, um, and I, uh, it's like, she's, she's just trying to, like, uh, like, stay in character, but also think of all the bullshit that <laughs> she's constantly hawking at people. And so I thought that was fucking funny. <laughs> that was pretty good. Also... Uh, the interview Kanye West of him. Oh my god! Bloody friend Major, thank you so much, good sir. The subscription, five months and a two month streak. That is very kind of you. Welcome to stream. Currently interviewing or, or reviewing our vinyl ways a ton. Almost done, by the way. It's gonna be a short goddamn review, like I told you, chat. <laughs> thank you, though. Hope you're doing very well. Cheers to you, good sir. Mm. They're interviewing Kanye West. Well, I have opinions on chat. Not so much as an artist, but as a person. And I, what, one thing I will say, though, when they're interviewing Kanye West, because this was, I, this, I guess this came out like 2000, this is an older documentary, it came out like about a decade ago, like 10 years ago, I'd say. So it's probably like 2010, 2011 or something. And they're talking to Kanye West, and it's actually a good interview. Uh, he's actually very succinct because he's talking about his passion of music and who his, in his inspirations are. And he's expressing just a incredible breadth of knowledge about the people who influenced him, about his own music, what he's passionate about. Uh, I think this is before his mother passed away, maybe. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he just, he just, he didn't seem, he didn't seem like the Kanye West we're currently seeing right now. This is not the MAGA, this is not the MAGA Kanye West or anything like that. This is not the guy that's going out, uh, talking to TMZ, saying that slavery is a choice, okay? He's just, he's just talking, and to the interview, he's talking about what he's passionate about when it comes to music, what inspired him, and it's like, oh, wow, I just, I just, I haven't seen this version of him before, and so it's interesting to me who, who's really only seen kind of the crazy side of him uh, in, in, in media. Gary Eakin! Gary Eakin, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the host, good sir. Hope you're doing very well. But I was like, oh, this is great. And then the fucking... <laughs> and then it, it, it's ruined. And then it's ruined. Uh, or it, it, just, it just ends on a note like, hmm. <laughs> Not that it's ruined, but it's just like, that's an interesting way to end it. Because he's talking about his passion, his love of music, and how it inspired him, and all these other artists that inspired him throughout his entire career, and when he was a kid. And it's like, oh, wow, I really get, I, I get I'm getting a, a side of Kanye West that, we, that I just never seen before. And maybe, the, maybe that side that people always talk about, but a lot of people don't see nowadays, right? And he finally answered, it's like, when it comes to a song, when you listen to a good song, it's just like a really good fucking pussy. And I'm just like, all right, here we go. <laughs> and then it just ends. It just has him stare at the camera and goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> Bad.
Ben Shapiro would have opinions about that. <laughs> I'm just like, after all this, like, really well put together interview, it just ends on that. And I'm like, hmm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I thought that, that, that amused me. <laughs> that really amused me. <laughs> um, but uh, overall, chat, like, listen, if you're passionate about music, especially, like, underground hip-hop or, or rap or really any, uh, like, you know, music that, that is not, that, that is kind of niche, I think this is something that you should check out. You know, it's absolutely free. They sample a lot of good pieces, chat. They tell you about a lot of artists that I just, I'm not familiar with. Maybe you guys are aware of. But it's like, okay, this is kind of cool for those people. But overall, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. Like, I really like that first 20, 25 minutes we're getting to know uh, this person who started this company and the tragedy behind it and how he rose above that tragedy in honor of his friend who died under very tragic circumstances, helped, helped his own family out, but also his friend's family to this day. I mean, they talk about how he started this company in 96, and it's money, millions of dollars are still going to his friend's family to this day. I was like, that is really fucking nice. But that's all I could say, Chad. That, that is, that is. <laughs> Our vinyl weighs a ton. The true story of Stone Throws Away uh, uh, record label. So I hope you liked it. <laughs> hey, Nate, welcome to the stream. <laughs> hope you're doing well. <laughs> so maybe he's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs>